Okay, this video from IamCornet.org, the Apologetics and Outreach Ministry of Landmark Missionary Baptist Church in Jacksonville, Arkansas, uh, addresses the possible cause of the error. Here's IamCornet.org. My son did this, so that's why I'm really grateful. He actually is behind all of the technology. He and um, the young pastors at our church that are techno savvy, they're native techno savvy specialists. So I'm working to catch up with them. But <clears throat> the interesting thing that I found is that this error of omission, Mark Keeler, a very great uh, expositor and teacher, he came out of a background, uh, let's say Arminian background, then you come all the way across and you go perhaps. As some people say too far I don't know if I would ever find it necessary to negate someone because um, of an error of omission it can happen and does happen to all of us we review and revise and improve our understanding of the Bible hopefully we do that before we broadcast publish or distribute too much of our error uh, or the result of or that is a product that uh, has within it errors of omission so when someone comes out, let's say, of Arminianism, it becomes um, a, a belief that somehow faith precedes, precedes birth, then all the way over here to birth precedes precedes faith and these of course they <clears throat> they're contrary and by definition uh, we know in the condition of contrariness and contrary things they both can't be true however <clears throat> uh, they can both have fallible elements uh, fallible elements elements here well, I'll just point out one. So, a fallible element, a fallible element. And that's the good thing about not being an advocate for any particular construct that is completely sold out to something. The scriptures are very much sufficient. So, what's what does the text tell us? Well, we know that when we're, let's say we consider a text, just get a little flow chart going here, and we say, let's say the Greek text which is koine which is very wordy and uh, I have to be careful I don't want to say simple but it's it's painstakingly wordy and it has several things in it so let's just say that while we're going through our text and we consider etymology and we consider syntax and grammar And we're going along here and we're, we're trying to understand this and let's say you diagram your sentences and you uh, place it in context and you do all this work and labor uh, we still haven't <clears throat> necessarily resolved uh, what seems to be uh, irreconcilable because we know these two things can't be true and if there's a fallible element what is it well the thing about corne and we all know this and we're taught this and simply because it's ignored or omitted doesn't change the fact but kind of action kind of action is uh, very large in God's Greek language he's the one that created Koine he's the one that gave it to us he's the one that inspired uh, authors to produce that for us and we have that so when we omit this and both sides seem to have done so a proper understanding uh, can't be cannot it's impossible for a proper understanding when this is omitted in, in in this case that is in relationship to something very important like faith and the new birth and the new birth and faith so what we have in actuality according to Corne, the text and it's certainly nothing that i've found anyone able or willing to debate it would be embarrassing for them to 
try to somehow <laughs> come from one of these fallible constructs, these here. Uh, these are just, this one is, the fallible element here is, uh, it falls short and this one presumes a little bit. So they both are missing uh, the kind of action. So according to the Bible, we have gospel, then we have, so the gospel precedes believe, I'll write it the way it appears in the Koenig text, and then birth, birth precedes believe, believing, which is important enough to go ahead and write it down. Now, if you're from the Arminian camp, you can't, um, you're because you're primed and taught, then you're not permitted, if you are loyal to your Arminian constructs, you're not permitted to attribute to the new birth the continuation of believing. And if you are uh, committed to the construct, let's say Calvinism, which comes in a variety of forms, but let's say you're committed to that, and one of the core things is birth precedes faith, then you're not permitted, encouraged, nor even um, able because you might be over-invested. It's like the book, Subtle Power of Spiritual Abuse. You may have gone too far that you couldn't return. It would, it would not be a consequence to Christians for someone to come back closer to the Scriptures, which we're either going to the Scriptures or away from them, and we're all encouraged to come to the Scriptures. So whether you're coming to the Scriptures from Calvinism or Arminianism, this is what we as missionary-minded uh, Baptist say is called out and we call people to come out to this so that this endless banter which of course I know sometimes we may have to <clears throat> you know we start somewhere everyone starts in camped somewhere so no it's not someone's fault as much as it's just the reality of our condition as Dr. Walter Martin taught me when someone says they were raised a certain way, he said, remind them immediately that it's not their fault so that no one who's actually carrying out evangelism, especially an apologetics and evangelistic outreach effort. Uh, we began with the Fishers of Men program and it was written by a Baptist. And it was to provoke us to go out and fish for men <clears throat> and gave us a, a, an approach and. It was very good, so we've added apologetics, extended that. But certainly a person doesn't have the right attitude nor spirit of Christ if they're ready to go out and just blame people for these omissive errors. When you're uh, looking at things through a construct, if you'll notice, this can become uh, difficult. Uh, these can become, for lack of a better illustration, almost like a pair of glasses here where we're, we can only view things through these lens that we've been given. And as I've said, um, I have no, uh, I have no uh, animosity toward that because I certainly came out of things so skewed and blinded by them that I couldn't see anything were it not for God gracing me um, with men who were not proponents or advocates of Arminianism or Calvinism, I would still be in that uh, state of skewed view and not necessarily, um, I wouldn't suggest blindness here, but definitely the lens is, is uh, crafted to favor. It's crafted by bias and skewed by that. It, it doesn't see clearly. So that's it. That's exactly how it might have happened uh, for Mark Keeler, for example. And then sometimes some of us are just bored with people who don't study the Bible, so uh, we at least want to be around people who are at least thinking and studying rather than those who just simply negate. Okay, that's enough for that.